Hey, what is up guys? It's Brennan here and today we're going to be taking a look at Zipbooks, doing a Zipbooks tutorial and review. Again, taking a look step by step how to get started with Zipbooks for beginners and how to get started with this simple and yet free accounting software. Again, they do have a free version. We'll be diving into the pricing and structure as well as taking a look at the back end, showing you again step by step how to get started with Zipbooks. Now, I have covered a lot of different accounting software here on the channel, so I figured I would do in more in-depth overview of Zipbooks as well. And if you are interested in checking out Zipbooks, you can go and check out those links down below in the video description. Again, some of which are affiliate links, which is a great way to help out and support the channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into things. So taking a look at Zipbooks here, again, they are a simple accounting software that you know makes you even smarter. That's sort of their shtick here. It is a very simple and a basic software, especially compared to a lot of the other competitors that are out there, such as maybe QuickBooks or FreshBooks or or even Wave, honestly, for that matter, uh, which I've covered all those here on the channel. So again, if you are interested in maybe looking at other software as well, feel free to check out my channel for other tutorials on accounting software, as well as other comparisons. So taking a look at Zipbooks, again, they do offer invoicing and billing, accounting, as well as business intelligence. Now, some of those features are more paid features compared to what they provide to you on the free version. Now, in this tutorial, I'm just gonna be showing you the essentials and the most simple version of Zipbooks, which is their free version, showing you how to get started with it. Again, if you are looking for that free accounting software, which I get that most of you guys watching this video are probably looking for the free accounting software that Zipbooks offers, and again, how to use it as well. Uh, in in terms of what it does include on the free version, taking a look here at their pricing page before we dive into the software again, uh, their free version allows you to send unlimited invoices again, and this pricing is subject to the at the recording and the time of making this video. So be sure to check out the pricing page, the most realistic and up-to-date pricing. Always have to say that disclaimer there because you know pricing is always subject to change, especially nowadays. Uh, so you can send unlimited invoices, manage your uh, vendors, customers, accept digital payments via Square or PayPal. Uh, so you can accept payments as well, view basic reporting and connect one bank account. So that is what is included on the free version. Uh, in terms of a lot of the other paid features, uh, you'll see that soon enough in the software as well in this demo video. Um, but essentially, it's just like allowing you to do multiple bank accounts. If you want to set up like scheduling, automated reminders, these things aren't necessarily necessary, uh, as well as additional team members. So if you do have more team members, uh, you know, then you will have to consider the monthly fee. And then you start getting into comparisons of like, well, which if I'm going to be paying for this software, which might be better. Uh, that's up for you to decide, of course. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Zipbooks. So here is what Zipbooks look like, looks like on the back end. Once you get signed up, it will have your company name in the top right corner here. Uh, as for this tutorial, we have chosen, uh, you know, Joe Schmo for this tutorial is what I've picked um, for this video here. You have your setup guide here. So you add your company name. Uh, you, you can add in your address and phone number, your logo, connect to bank account, accept credit card payments, and complete your overall user information. Uh, so that's sort of the overall step-by-step process. So again, you have your company name here. Uh, we have, you know, obviously I have not added an address, a phone number, a website. You can add all of those things. You can also add a logo. This is important to add here in the initial signup phase. If you do want this to show on your invoicing, which I get a lot of you guys probably do want this to show up on your invoicing. If you do plan on using Zipbooks for invoicing uh, within your business as well, again, you can add in your address and phone number there as well. Uh, you can add your logo. So all these kind of take you to that same page there and sort of like highlight it like, hey, this is where you drag it and add it. Uh, you can even add in, you know, your number of employees, your entity type, uh, annual revenue, founding date. You know, you can really, you know, get to the nitty gritty details of what you want to add there. Uh, again, the main pieces are really just what you want to show on your company invoices. That's where you're going to edit it here on this page here. Uh, so in terms of using it as an invoicing and accounting software, as well as their reporting uh, that they have, we're going to go ahead and add in a few manual transactions here. Uh, I'm not going to be connecting a bank account here in this video. Again, it is pretty straightforward. If you do want to connect a bank account that will help you pull in those, you know, income expenses automatically, especially if you're syncing it just to a singular business bank account, um, which most people re re would recommend is to just have a primary business bank account, have all your income coming in there, have all your expenses coming out of that uh, singular account. That will make your accounting life easier if you 
set up your banking uh, in a friendly way. Again, it depends on how your banking is set up in your business, um, but that's sort of a topic for another video, but that will make it easier. Again, on the free version, you are limited to one banking account. So that is something uh, worth considering at least uh, in terms of how your banking is set up. But we're gonna be adding in manual transactions because that is the easiest way Again, if you don't want to link things, maybe you don't want to link your accounting software, it will make your life a lot easier just to pull in things in automatically. Again, they do allow you to do one free one on Zipbooks, uh, but we're going to go ahead and just go to transactions. Now, another thing to keep in mind there as well, before we add in the manual transactions is it will also record your invoicing uh, as well. So, you know, once you start sending invoices, categorizing transactions, again, we will be adding in the manual transactions for income and expenses in just a moment. And you, when you do create invoices, it will also automatically log that in your financial statements, in your financial performance uh, within your business as well. That will show up in the reports. So that is nice as well. Again, if you do, you know, maybe if you're already using an external invoicing software, you can also bring it into Zipbooks and then you kind of have everything all synced together already. If you do want to switch to Zipbooks for your invoicing as well, uh, as part of your accounting software financial setup. Uh, so going into transactions. So again, we're just going to be importing things manually. Uh, now you can enter things in custom. You can enter things in as a transfer. Again, transfers are more like if you're connecting a bank account, um, if you're going to be manually logging your deposits, such as your income, as you can see the dollar sign and your expenses, really, I guess transfers and custom don't really matter all that much to you, <laughs> but uh, deposits and expenses are really the main two uh, that we're going to be logging here. Now, again, you can choose to do these manually or you can connect a bank account. Just depends on what your overall banking setup is, what you're comfortable with and what you really want to do. So we're going to go ahead and log in, log a uh, manual uh, income here for the amount of uh, $1,300. So let's say it was, and we're going to go ahead and mark that as sales. Now they do have a variety of different categories when you're going in and marking things. Now, again, this sort of comes back to the argument of whether or not you want to go with single entry accounting or double entry accounting. I've mentioned this in every software because uh, every software tutorial because it really matters when you're entering in your transactions if you want to do you know single entry uh, all you really need to do is log your income and your expenses uh, you don't necessarily have to worry as much about logging assets um, and things like that again it does depend on the business that you're in uh, you know if you're in e-commerce you might consider logging your inventory just because that is an asset to your business um, so if you are considering that you might want to log you know assets that you have within your business and 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 things like that as well and to which account those go under whether it be you know uh, equity you know different things that they would be logged under, right? Um, if you're just doing single entry, all that really matters is just your main cash account is sort of the account that you're going to have things coming in and out of, uh, or your bank account will be uh, labeled here. As you can see, they even have it grayed out for like uh, checking as cash. If you can see that, I know it's maybe a little bit gray on the screen here, uh, but that's what your bank account paid to account. So if you have your bank account listed, uh, it would just uh, label that there. Um, again, it's up to you if you do want to log other things like, you know, invested capital owner distribution that does get a little bit more complicated, um, far beyond the scope of this video here today, as far as how you would log equity and things like that. But if you do want to log them, they are available here within the software. Um, so you have your, let's just say you made $1,300 in sales in your business. Uh, so you track that, you know, maybe you, you just, maybe you got paid that in cash actually in this case, you know, let's just say you got paid $1,300, $1,300 in cash and you need to log that as business income so that when you go to the IRS and you go and pay your taxes at the end of the year, you know, everything is, you know, done correctly, uh, to say the least. You can also drag attachments here as well as maybe like a receipt or something like that. That's primarily what people would do for dragging attachments. You can add a customer details. So you can add recurring customers. Uh, you can add a name for it, uh, notes as well. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and save that as $13, $1,300 in sales and under the cash account on July 3rd. Um, then we're going to go ahead and add an expense here. Now getting into expenses, this does get a little bit more complicated uh, compared to just logging cash and sales. Now there are a variety of different 
you know, cash accounts for income. Sales is the main one. There are also other types of income accounts. Um, but for most people who are just doing single entry accounting, that's really the main one that matters for most people. And that's where most things are going to be categorized in. I get that there is interest income. There are other you know, types of income that you might get within your business, uh, but the most often it's going to be labeled under sales. So we're going to leave that there as $1,300 in sales. Now getting into expenses, the categories do vary quite a bit more in the expense category, again, because of the way that the IRS, at least here in the United States, if you are in the United States, or even if you're in other countries, I'm sure they have different categorizations for different types of expenses when you're going in and um, paying taxes on in your business, right? Um, I get this is mainly focused on the United States, but does apply as well to other countries as well. Uh, so for the amount, let's just say you had a $200 expense in your business, and we're going to go over to categories. Now, this is where things do get a little bit more complicated, like I mentioned. Um, so you have liabilities and things like that. Again, that goes more into your company's balance sheet. That is more so if you're going for the full on accounting setup, if you're going to be logging, you know, assets within your business. If all you're doing is logging a basic expense and you're just looking at single entry, you're not necessarily caring as much about the specific balance sheet within your business. Uh, if at least in this tutorial here, if you're just looking at regular expenses, you know, income expenses, what are you owed on, you know, especially when it comes to tax time, uh, in your business. So getting those tax deductible expenses, right? So you want to make sure when you're logging your expenses that you're logging them within the proper categories, which as you can see here, we have advertising, software and subscriptions, office expenses. These are all under expenses. Now you can actually log something as just a general expense, or if you are in something like e-commerce or selling physical products, you also want to consider like cost of goods sold, uh, your overall cogs within your business as well. So you can log that here too. Um, but if we're we're taking a look at general expenses within your business. These are the main expenses, right? You have maybe accounting services. Maybe you're paying somebody to do this for you. <laughs> I don't know why you would be watching this tutorial, but maybe, maybe you are, maybe you're trying to DIY it. Um, you also have insurance, right? You have office expenses, you have travel, meals, and entertainment. Now, the thing that's important to consider here is that the IRS deducts the business expenses at different percentage rates. It varies as well year to year. So when you're going in and filing your taxes each year, you wanna make sure that all your business expenses are properly logged under their category so that you get the best, so you get deductions as well as the fact that your deductions are actually accurate uh, to your expenses within your business as well. Uh, so for example, in that case, like meals and entertainment, Entertainment actually currently under the current IRS laws do not does not actually count for anything. Uh, it's just meals. So really they label it here as meals and entertainment, but uh, you can't actually log entertainment anymore, at least at the moment. Maybe the laws will change in the future. Maybe we'll get back to that. Um, travel, like there's certain travel expenses. Um, again, you can dig more into the IRS website if you wanna know more about all these specific subcategories and getting into the nitty gritty details. But ultimately when it comes to, you know, tax time and you're actually filing your taxes, you know, whether you have someone as a tax preparer to do that for you or your tax preparation software will give you the information there. So really when you're doing your accounting, like here in ZipBooks, Really the main thing to consider is just making sure that you're logging things under the right category. Uh, but again, I did just wanna explain that, that each category is a little different in terms of your deductions. And that's why it's important to log each of these categories under the proper subcategory so that the expense is logged properly. Uh, when it comes to tax time, again, you know, if you're not sure about certain expenses, that's why it's important to detail them as well, right? Uh, so maybe make the expense name here. Um, maybe add in the receipt, add in some notes if you're maybe unsure about an expense within your business. Uh, and then you have more information so that, you know, a year later down the road, you're like, oh, what was that expense for? And then you can actually search and find uh, if that expense um, was like a actual tax deductible expense, because, uh, you know, you log it however you want in here, but, you know, you do need to make sure that it is actually, um, 
an expense that is tax deductible within your business. But this is where you would log it, right? So let's just say we had $200 in advertising expenses in the business. I get that's a little bit long-winded to explain the categories, um, but it is important to categorize them correctly. So under settings, again, you also have other things like that. You can add a pass-through customer. Uh, you can assign things to a 1099 as well. Uh, again, you do need a specific contact if that is going to be set up that way. Uh, you add your expense name. Uh, so in this case, advertising, let's just say like local uh, billboard or something like that. Obviously, that would be an advertising expense, local billboard, $200. I, I don't know how much billboards actually cost. That's probably way under shooting how much it actually costs for a billboard. Uh, but let's just say it's $200. Um, then you just go ahead and click save here. And boom, we have the $1,300 of cash, $200 of advertising expense. We're going to go ahead and add another expense as well in here. Uh, we're going to go to here. We're going to scroll down and let's just say we have a software or subscription. Let's just say like uh, $12 um, for the uh, Jelly of the Month Club. And boom, so we have $12 there. We're gonna go ahead and click save. Uh, and then once you have all your transactions entered here, again, if you link your bank account, much simpler as well. Uh, you go in here, you confirm them. So you're like, okay, it, boom, it popped in. I've categorized it. I see what the name is. Again, if you do link a bank account, names will already be populated here. Uh, this is just if you're doing it manually. Once you confirm these transactions, which it's important to make sure they're categorized correctly, you've confirmed all three of them. Um, and then boom, you have three transactions and they are all in here. You know, 15, 12 is what it total comes down to. Uh, you know, they start out as pre-confirmed just because we entered them manually, but you know, you go in, you confirm them, boom, they're all confirmed. And once you go back to your homepage here, uh, you will then see your financial performance. So for July, since these are all entered in July, you have your overall revenue of $1,300 plus 200 and well, minus $212 in business expenses to a whopping net income of $1,088 in total. Uh, so that's really nice within the software here. This is very simple, especially compared to a lot of other softwares out there that I've done tutorials on. That's one thing I do like about ZipBooks. It is very basic and easy. Uh, they do keep things very simple. So as you can see here, uh, that is logged under financial performance. We scroll down here. We have our overall monthly revenue uh, percentage tracking from the previous month. You also have, you know, if, if you did go further back, you would have the data here. Uh, you can also track time within the software as well. Um, if you're going to be adding in like payroll and things like that, um, I get that's a little bit more complicated, but that's if you do have employees that you're paying uh, and you do want to track it within ZipBooks, it would uh, populate there. Uh, now, in terms of other reports, so you have your transactions that you can go ahead and add. You also have your categories section. Again, you can also add other categories if you do want to maybe make more categories, again, depending on maybe your country uh, or if you want to add other subcategories that are maybe underneath travel. So if you have subcategories of travel, such as like um, plane tickets or like airfare, if you put airfare under a subcategory of travel uh, or maybe ride shares, Ubers, uh, that can help you just in your business to see and delineate Oh, where am I spending money in my business? That's something else that you can do in the software here uh, to get more specific as far as like subcategories uh, within your business. This matters a lot more for when you're going in and uh, tracking your overall like balance, like how much. Uh, you've spent within a certain subcategory. As you can see here, uh, we have advertising of $200. We have $12 in software and subscription. Um, so you can really see like where things are sitting uh, in your overall like balance sheet within your business or even with just within the categories uh, as well. Now, in terms of reports, we also do have reports in here as well. Now, some of these are premium reports that are uh, limited to the paid versions, uh, but you do also have income statements, balance sheet, accounts receivable, taxes uh, invoiced as well. Now, accounts receivable uh, is more important, again, for invoicing. That is essentially an invoice, uh, you know, like amounts the customer owes you, how many days overdue they are. So if you maybe made a payment, you know, if a customer 
you issued you, you issued them an invoice, you made it due, you know, within 30 days and they haven't paid you yet, or you're going to receive it, that's where that will appear within the accounts receivable. Again, as you can easily see here, you know, zero to 30 days, uh, you know, 31 to 60 days. And then if they're really late, then you got to start hounding them, calling them, you know, knock on their door. Hey, you know, you got to pay your bill, uh, things like that. So you can see that there as well, which is nice. Uh, just within your business, you also have your balance sheet here. Uh, so you can see your overall equity total, you know, cash accounts, uh, assets, things like that. Um, as well as your income statement. Now the income statement to me is the most important statement within your business. This is showing you how healthy your business is, where your cash flows are at, and are you actually turning a profit at the end of the day? Because some people, they might make money in, money out, money in, money out, money in, money out. If you don't look at and you know, wake up and look at the month to month basis of overall net income and really seeing like, hey, how is your business actually doing? You would not know, right? Uh, without actually running the numbers, you would not know how much money you might be spending on certain things uh, if you just have money coming in and out of your account all the time. You know, it can get messy just just purely using your bank account to kind of see where you're at. Uh, it definitely helps, especially in a business, or maybe even if it's a side hustle business, see like how much it's actually bringing in month to month, where you're at, and maybe even where your business is making more money at, right? Like sometimes in your sales, you're like, oh, I actually made a lot of money from this type of customer, something like that. So you really can dig into the details. Now, again, we only have July uh, logged, so but this will show the month to month reports. And you can see overall revenue, you know, operating income, uh, net income uh, within your business, your overall expenses, and then where those expenses are at. So if we click in, again, that's more within the uh, you know advanced version. If you do want to dig into that as well. Um, you know, going into specific totals and things like that. Again, you can still just get that from your overall transactions expenses. Um, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much zip books. Again, you have your income statements. You can set up the columns here too. So you can set up total. Uh, you can separate things uh, monthly, quarterly, uh, yearly. So as you can see, we're currently in Q3 of 2024. You have your year to year setup. So 2024, you know, lifetime. Uh, you can do accrual versus cash basis. Um, so the difference there is accrual. Uh, would include things that maybe haven't been paid to you yet, but you have issued an invoice. Cash is just purely what has actually come into your bank account. Um, that's the difference there between those two. You do also have all your confirmed transactions as well as a start date and end date uh, period, again, and a total too. Um, personally, I do like the monthly columns is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, those are the financial statements. Again, you also have your balance sheet too. You can separate by the same types of columns as well as an income, uh, you know, percentage of sales. So overall percentage of sales. This can be nice to see like, oh my gosh, I'm spending 0.9% of my overall expenses on software or 15% on advertising. We need to get that to 10% you know, typical corporate speak type things. Um, you can also log that here as well, uh, which can be nice if you're trying to get percentages. I, I know math nerds might appreciate that as well. Uh, you also have overall cash flow statements. Again, that's more so for going uh, tracking equities, things like that, as well as accounts receivable. Uh, if you have your overall um, invoices set up, you also have month to date again, you also have last month, you know, quick, easy this year, last year, quick reports you can also set up there as well. Uh, so the reporting feature is pretty detailed in my opinion and does have a lot in there. Uh, so, you know, in addition, they do also have your contacts. You can go ahead and add contacts, vendors. This will help you track things if you are logging different vendors. You can add in their name, you know, email, you know, company, uh, address, website, all notes as well. Um, you know, you can add that in there again. Now, ZipBooks does have time tracking in the premium version. If you are going to be doing time tracking, again, not getting into that into this video here today, but that is a more premium version that they do also have available here. That can be nice if you do have 1099 contractors that you are going to be having like on your payroll, things like that, just showing you that here as sort of like a preview. If you are interested in the paid version of ZipBooks, again, this tutorial is mainly focusing on the free version 
uh, here today as well. Uh, in terms of invoices, right? Like how to create an invoice. Very simple uh, to create invoices in Zipbooks. All you do is go to import and then boom, you have your invoice and you go ahead and add everything in. So you want to build to a specific customer. Uh, we're going to go to Joe, build a Joe. Uh, we're going to add them as a customer. Uh, boom, we don't need any other information there. Uh, let's just say we uh, you know, have a lawn service company, something like that. Uh, and it is, you know, you can set up different currencies here uh, if you are in different currencies. And we're gonna say, um, you know, it was, you know, 20, you know, if it's uh, $200, something like that, uh, you know, they're due on a certain day. Uh, so let's say like July 3rd, so let's just say the rate is $200 um, for, you know, two, uh, one hour of service. So you're going to add, enter in the rate here. Uh, maybe if it was $200 an hour, three hours, you know, maybe you had a crazy lawn uh, that you needed to cut and that is um, like crazy, crazy lawn, something like that. You can add in description uh, as to what was done in terms of specific tasks. So you can say like uh, chop tree, woodcut, things like that, you know, yada, yada. You can get into really all the specifics here in terms of adding, you know, more line items, different tasks as well. Uh, you can also delete things here if you don't need that there on the invoice. You can also set up your terms, uh, notes as well. Um, you can also give them maybe a 10% off discount if you want to uh, save them a little bit of money and the total will automatically populate here at the top. Uh, and then you have, you know, obviously the invoice quality score is sort of like, hey, you probably should have an image. You probably should be more descriptive on your invoice. Uh, it is kind of nice that they do have that score there to kind of give you a basis of, oh, maybe I should add some more details to uh, the invoice. So maybe like adding in net 30, uh, something like that, that improves the invoice quality score. Again, that's just sort of a, an arbitrary metric. Uh, you can also accept credit cards so you can have that, you know, on or off. You do have to go in and add in your payment detail information. If you do want to enable uh, credit card payments as well within your business, um, or you can just keep this as a cash uh, based business as well and just give them that invoice um, directly. So all you have to do is then go ahead and click. You know, obviously, you have to um, verify your business and all that, you know, if you're going to be accepting payments directly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just, we're going to not do that. Um, if you want to add payments. So again, you do need to actually verify your business if you're going to be sending out invoices. Uh, but that's sort of just generally what an invoice would look like, um, within Zipbooks as well. You can also send in, uh, estimates as well. Uh, if you do want to send estimates, so very similar to an invoice here, uh, what the estimate looks like. You also have uh, recurring profiles as well. You know, this is good if you're going to be setting up like a recurring uh, invoice that sets up monthly. So maybe you are doing a lawn service and you know, it's not just like a one-time cut. Maybe you need to continue that service going. You also have that option there. Uh, you do also have um, items, you know, if you're <laughs> what items have been built out. So this is good if you are building out like your overall repertoire of what you sell or the typical services that you offer in your business. Those will be saved here uh, under your items area as well as reminders as well. So that, you know, some of these automatic reminders are again in the premium version in terms of, you know, scheduling recurring invoices. That's in the premium version, same with automated reminders, but you can still send unlimited, unlimited basic uh, invoices and manage unlimited customers uh, and accept digital payments through Square and PayPal within the Zipbooks regular version. So again, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful on Zipbooks, which again is a uh, you know free accounting software uh, and online invoicing. Again, it is a great easy software to get started with. Personally, from all the different tutorials I've done, this is definitely one of the simplest softwares to get started with and get used to because they really don't crowd it out with a whole bunch of extra jargon and they don't really try and upsell you really hardcore, which a lot of other softwares do tend 
to do. Uh, so again, that is Zipbooks. Again, if you are interested in getting started with Zipbooks, you can go ahead and check out those links down below in the video description. Again, if you found this tutorial helpful or found it uh, enjoyable or useful, then be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Anyway, guys, that was all for today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.